Hi, welcome back to Guru Grit. My name is Monica, and this week we're covering the Planetary Powers, the Planetary Powers series, and today we're doing Jupiter, the greatest of all the good things that could ever happen to a person come through him. So, of course, this is going to be a very special video, and we're going to discuss where he's strong, where he's weak, what he can do for you, and then, of course, everyone's favorite, what does it mean if he's your, the indicator of your spouse? So, before we begin, you can find me on TikTok, come say hi on Instagram. Thank you so much for emailing me and all your wonderful feedback. And if you'd like to support me, I finally have an answer for you after <laughs> almost a year. I do have a Patreon out now, so thank you so much. Now, Jupiter. Jupiter is known as the Great Benefic. So he rules things like, you know, heavenly information, God-given knowledge. He can help make a person really intuitive or a channeler if they're really, really in touch with the divine. So those are all really Jupiterian things. He is the largest celestial body as, you know, as a planet. The sun, the sun is a star, you know, but he's very heavy. He's actually very, very dense. So there's something about Jupiter where it comes to getting a lot of anything because by this definition, he rules abundance. Now, uh, the planets have, you know, Mercury can make you like a business person, Venus can have lots to do with currency, etc. But Jupiter just brings a lot of anything. So, of course, it could be what he rules things like auspiciousness and good luck, uh, to be jovial, to be very, very happy. Those are very Jupiterian qualities. So, it's no surprise, you know, he rules Sagittarius, which is a really happy go lucky energy and a happy go lucky sign. A lot to do with uh, optimism or idealism. So those are all very Jupiter things. Now he also rules teachers. So people who have incarnated to teach can have or should have at least a strong Jupiter or a well-placed Jupiter. And then depending on where it's placed, you'll know what they're going to teach or if they're just a teacher. So if you have, you know, Jupiter ruling the 10th house as a Gemini ascendant, and then Jupiter sits in uh, Libra in the fifth house, then you could just be a teacher like in general, okay? Now, um, Jupiter does very well in the first house. That's where he's strongest. And because he rules largeness, you know, it can give a wonderful, uh, wonderfully defined personality, uh, an optimist, an optimistic thinker. It can also make the person large. You know, it can make them very statuesque in appearance. So that's also Jupiter. Especially uh, on a woman, you know, like he rules the rump and the thighs through Sagittarius, so they could have a very shapely figure, you know, like uh, those old school, I feel like those like old school sailor tattoos where all the, or like pin up babes, you know, something like that. So very, very attractive. Um, you know, he can make a person really funny as well, or somebody who loves to laugh, which is very Sagittarian, somebody who loves to share joy, you know, he rules joy. He rules children. Children bring joy, or at least they should. Um, so, you know, he just, but he's a creative force. That's what I want to really specify. So, in synastry, if somebody, you know, if a couple has like amazing banging Jupiterian aspects, and then somebody says, but actually I don't want children, and they don't want children, we don't want children, so it's kind of like lost. It isn't. It's to create anything with another. So you could be a couple that goes into business, you could be a couple that cares about causes together, okay? He can be really charitable, he can make you really generous. So surely, you know, you can um, go around adopting, you know, or fostering dogs uh, or cats or working with wildlife, whatever. It's something where you give to others, you do something that's really like divinely approved. So those things are all really Jupiterian. So, as I mentioned, he rules Sagittarius, he rules Pisces, and he exalts in Cancer. So he debilitates in Capricorn, Virgo, and Gemini. Now, if you have a debilitated Jupiter, is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. So because he rules knowledge and he's so powerful and he is a benefic, he's the greatest benefic, he will always give you something and something good. So if he's debilitated, in a sense, because he has so much to do with the frequency of, you know, divine information, if he's debilitated, then he will just give you, you know, financial savvy in a very material sense. So instead of um, making you, let's say, rich in inner knowledge or something like that, or cosmic knowledge or celestial knowledge, divine knowledge, religious knowledge, uh, knowledge of other cultures or the world, which he also rules, he rules travel, then you can just be a very financially savvy person, okay? So when I see a debilitated Jupiter, I think that person could make money 
through very unorthodox means. Hopefully not criminal, ever, I never recommend that or encourage it, but let's say, you know, something to the effect of 10 years ago, if someone went to a very sound astrologer, they would have said, well, you should try this thing called cryptocurrency or something like now, like NFTs, because it's, it's common knowledge, but it's not common for someone to make their money that way. But people who have a debilitated Jupiter will try many things until something sticks because they struggle, right? So they'll figure it out. So it can actually make a person wealthy, especially if he sits in one of his houses that he likes being in, like the 11th house, you know, it's the house of gains. So he will just explode that house. He'll, he'll just, it's going to be busting, you know? He's also quite happy in the ninth house, which he naturally rules. It can give the person like wanderlust and it can cause them to be really, really mobile in their lifetime, move around a lot. It can also bless their marriage there in the ninth house. In the fifth house as well, a lot to do with children. It can make them so creative or really desirous for children or to express creatively as well. And the second house is also financial house. So Jupiter can do quite well there. You know, it can also make you have a really happy family life growing up or uh, want to have a big family as well. So he's really strong in Cancer, he's really strong in Pisces, and he's very strong in Sagittarius as well, because he rules those signs. So signs to do with, you know, uh, dreaming, I suppose, like being dreamy, be, uh, being a thinker, that's a creative thinker, a free thinker, outside of the box thinker, but you should still be able to function in the world. So one thing to mention then is wherever a planet is very powerful or sometimes even too powerful, it can destabilize the chart because the person gets so wrapped up in that momentum because it comes so easily to them. So if you have a lot of Jupiterian energy, you know, four or five planets in Sagittarius, he's in the first house, he's exalted, you want to be sure that you are not overly optimistic. You still need a touch of reality to survive in the world and to navigate this earthly plane. And, you know, it's okay to be dreamy, it's okay to be spiritual, I mean, this is coming from me, so it surely must be okay, but um, you have to be mindful that you still, you know, need to pay your bills, and you need to make plans, and you need to do X, Y, Z. So one thing that he can do is, if he's too strong, and there's nothing kind of there to challenge him, or you're not really insightful, I suppose, is he can cause a person to overreach, uh, needlessly overreach and fail time and time again. You know, just um, be mindful that you're actually having some sort of practical application to your dreams. You're putting in some kind of work, you're putting in some kind of planning. So, what if you are a really Jupiterian person? Well, I mentioned personality-wise, you know, um, probably just a big spirit. Somebody who loves to laugh, somebody who's worldly, cultured, cultivated. He does have a lot to do with our educations. So, if you don't go to university, you know, like a very traditional sort of route. He can just make the person very cultivated. You know, they could, uh, they could have grown up, um, even if he's debilitated, you know, depending on where he's placed, you could have just been uh, in that environment where your parents had literature and classical music or whatever. So you're just well-versed. You're just worldly. You're just literate. I had an English teacher who said literacy is not knowing how to read and write. To be a truly literate person, you must know what's happening everywhere at all times and must know what has happened here and everywhere at all times. So you have to know history and art and politics and all these things. So those things you can just self-cultivate through Jupiter, see where he sits and figure it out. So like Jupiter is my soul planet. So I'm uh, taller than my older sibling and I'm big bone. Like I'm just larger than her. You know, uh, it can make a person lar and in weight, yes, but not just in weight. Like you could just have mass, okay? So muscle mass large bones, things like that. I, my hands and feet are too big for my body. That's another one. I'm, I'm disproportioned as a person. So that's very Jupiterian. You know, one of my friends uh, has a Sagittarian stellium and she's six foot tall. So she's like a tall, gracious lady. So that's very Jupiterian. Now, speaking of Jupiter, Jupiter is the husband for a woman. So even if he's not in your seventh house, even if he's not your spousal indicator, if uh, you know, you're not a Gemini ascendant, or you're not a Virgo ascendant, or Capricorn, uh, no, not Capricorn, but Virgo, uh, Gemini ascendant. It doesn't matter. If you're looking to marry a man, if you're looking to marry a man, check the condition of your Jupiter. It's going to let you know what to expect. So, I want to get this out of the way. If your Jupiter is debilitated, it's alright. 
you just have an adjustment period when you meet that person. But I, all relationships are like that. You know, you could date someone for six months and then get married very quickly. You're going to have an adjustment. You can date them for six years and get married, you know, much later, and you still have an adjustment when you transition into marriage. So there's, there's just, you know, a period of kind of like adjustment when it's debilitated. You kind of have to choose with the head and the heart and not be too... Uh, idealistic sometimes like I said he's, if he's too strong you can just sort of jump into something and not really think about it so for the women watching it you know if you have Jupiter with the north or the south node as uh, much as it feels like you're destined to have an impulse marriage um, just really think about it you know ask your parents opinion or your friends opinions and make sure that they kind of meet your future spouse and then they give them the all clear or something like that because you just can't see clearly. You can't see clearly. It's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it's like this fog has descended upon your judgment where um, your future mate is concerned. You know, it can be very adventurous and very fun, but you just want to be sure. Another thing, if he's with the nodes, it can cause you to marry someone unorthodox. You know, maybe someone outside your community, outside your race, ethnicity, religion, or upbringing. They could be vastly different from you. You know, maybe, um, you work a nine to five and you have like a job as an actuary or you work in a bank and then you marry like an actor or a musician or a rock star or something. It's just like so random, you know, something like that. Can but when Jupiter is a spousal planet, right? So if you have Sagittarius in the seventh house, Pisces in the seventh house, or he's your spousal planet, you tend to seek out people that you bond with in terms of your values. So values are very important to these people. And they will choose their mate based on do we agree on these things that are just not negotiable. Morals, beliefs, religions, okay? If I'm family oriented, are you family oriented, okay? That's not negotiable for me, okay? If, if I care about material things, are you materialistic? Maybe that's not negotiable, okay? Maybe you both want children, maybe you don't want children. But those things are like values, okay? So some people are honest but not loyal. <laughs> some people are loyal but they're deceitful. So values are, of course, talking about the luckiest planet. My battery died and uh, I was going to say cute jokes about Mercury retrograde. But I, don't, I refuse to be bullied by the shiftiest little planet or my chart ruler. So we, we're not going to do that. So we're not going to fall down that rabbit hole. But as I was saying, um, Jupiterian spouses are you know people that you bond with over your values and those things are just not negotiable to you so these are people who will truly you know like someone who's a, a buses tables for a living makes eight dollars an hour and then he meets this you know maybe a-list actress or something and if their values do not align this woman does not stand a chance at like seducing that man or vice versa you know like they're just people who are like they don't care they don't care they don't care if you're rich, if you're powerful, if you come from a good family, if you're educated, or this, 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 this. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it looks on paper. They just can't be bought, right? They just, they have very strong convictions about their beliefs. And if the beliefs don't sync up, forget about it. It's never going to happen. So that's the only way to really get a Jupiterian person into your life, if you're supposed to marry one, is to just make sure that those things line up. So, physically, physically, like I said, Jupiter will probably give a tall spouse or taller than average. So if a average height for a woman is like 5'6", you know, she could be 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". If, if it's for a man, let's say it's like 5'10", he could be like 6'1", six 6'2". Foot, six foot six but you have to um, keep demographics in mind. I always, you know, say like, oh, if you're in the Netherlands, he might be like 6'7", or 6'9", or something like that. Okay, so just bear in mind. And the opposite to that is like Mercury. Mercury rules smallness, so they might be short or they might be quite petite. But Jupiter is the opposite. So if it's a man, it would be you know broad-shouldered, uh, broad-chested, uh, or large arms. You know, just like a big dude. Like it's the only way I can put it. Like a tree or something like that. And they should have you know a booming laugh and like a very happy presence. So something like that. Just a joy-focused person. So I mentioned, um, you know, seventh house. So jobs, you know, they could be a teacher, they could be in finances, they could be in the law as well, because Jupiter has a lot to do with uh, law. He rules the ninth house, and you know, which is like legalities and um, has a lot to do with government. So either way, if um, they're not in like finance or business or something like that, generally they are just good with money. And another thing too is Jupiter is quite generous, and because it's a caring planet you'll tend to attract a spouse that wants to share what they have. And not just with you, but with the world. So 
you'll probably know your spouse because they'll have a cause that they're particularly interested in. So it can be, you know, anything. Children, children's a big, you know, Jupiterian thing, but animal welfare, the environment, anything. But they will have this like humanitarian essence about them. They'll really, really care about something and they're happy to share. And they'll probably also, you know, be caring with them. Um, your family and their family. They'll just be generous to everybody. So that's very, very Jupiterian, like a larger than life individual. And always good karma if you have a Jupiter spouse to travel with them. And you'll see that in the chart, you know, if it's like uh, aspecting fifth or ninth house, like when you're married with children, is to go traveling with your children. So usually family vacations are very stressful for people. But people with this sort of placement, they just do well karmically to travel with their own families or with their spouse because your spouse becomes your family. Or visiting in-laws is actually like a joy rather than, well, there's always jokes about why people hate their in-laws. But you probably luck out, okay? You would probably luck out. So, um, I mean, I know if somebody married me, they would luck out because my family is amazing and I'm a Jupiterian person, so that makes sense. You know, like we'd always have a great time together. We're like the Brady Bunch or something. So, um, in terms of houses, you know, I mentioned what houses he does well in and things of that nature, um, how he looks, what you can expect from your spouse. And yeah, another house is actually the 12th, the 12th house, because he naturally, you know, rules the 12th sign. And the 12th house is foreign lands. So you could have a pull to meet your future spouse there if you're going to marry a Jupiterian spouse, or if he's your seventh ruler and he sits in the 12th house, you know, if you're a woman or a man who wants to marry a man and Jupiter's in the 12th house, then you might marry a foreigner or you might be married abroad. You know, if it's debilitated or like somehow agitated somehow, then you might just like elope and be like, oh, I don't care about the formalities. I just want to get married. I want to be married. I don't care about the wedding. And you just sort of like take off and Jupiter's like, what an adventure. So all those things are possible, but what an amazing planet. He rules the color yellow, like a murky, you know, reddish yellow, mustard yellow. Um, very, very 70s, like 60s color. Always, I always think of Jupiterian cars as those like station wagons with the wooden paneling or those like Volkswagen vans. So um, just like a really nice like earthy yellow. And he rules Thursdays. So Thursday is a really good day for any kind of spiritual work, spiritual pursuits, prayer, meditation, mantras, you know, journaling, being, you know, introspective, reflecting and um, to be giving. Thursday is a good day to be giving. So Thursdays I used to do free discourses for three hours on astrology um, because that's the day of astrology. So it's the day that rules astrology, rules Jupiter, or he rules it rather. And just be giving on Thursdays if you want to make your Jupiter stronger. And if you have a strong Jupiter, then just enjoy your Thursdays. And speaking of enjoyment, thank you for being here with me. I've enjoyed making this video for you. And thank you so much for watching Guru Grit. I look forward to hearing from you and answering more questions. I'm going to do houses after this. So thanks so much for watching. And I wish you a wonderful Jupiter Day every Thursday. Bye-bye.